Hey you guys, hope you are doing well. Um, tonight I wanted to talk to you about some discipline strategies for teenagers. Um, I had a lot of you reach out to me and ask, what do I do with my 17, 16, 17 year old? You know, they're not quite the adult age that I always talk about, but they're teetering on that. And so how do I handle, um, how do I handle things with them? So, and they're still living at home and so forth. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about that tonight. So for those of you that are new here, my name is Sally Harris and I help desperate moms of defiant adult children. I help the moms regain their own life because uh, if you lived uh, just a short time on that path in your own life, you quickly realize how fast the mom loses her own way um, because the stress and um, just our own, we don't have the coping skills sometimes. There's just a lot of different uh, things that play into that. And so I help the mom regain their own life using different strategies and techniques that I use. All right, so I will put a link to my discovery call below after the video. Um, but just to dive in here, so discipline strategies that work for teens. Some of these I used when my girls were teens. Um, depending on the child, sometimes it worked. <laughs> Sometimes it didn't, but I think they're important and I definitely would do that part all over again. Um, number one is remove electronics. Like um, anytime you talk about disciplining your children, you want to think about what's gonna hurt the most. Like even when they're, if they're five years old, what are you gonna take away? You're gonna take away their favorite toy because that's gonna hurt them and hopefully help them to learn from the situation. So helping your teenager um, hopefully learn from that their situation is taking away electronics so whether it's their iPad their phone and so forth and um, many professionals say that 24 hours is usually enough um, I know kids are so addicted to their phones that that usually um, if it doesn't cause an outbreak in your home first uh, that is definitely should be something that would be successful um, Taking away time with friends, you know, as you as your kids get older and you realize how um, when you start to put two and two together, I should say, like if when they're getting in trouble, who are they hanging out with? Um, not to say it's always that other kid, but you need to kind of put all the pieces together and figure out, you know, who's the instigator and the instigator may very well be your child. And that's not something that you want to admit or think about, but it could be the truth. So just to really be open-minded and try to figure this out. Um, so taking a break from certain friends is always a good thing sometimes. Um, and I also, with that one, I always think that when it's said and done and they're able to go back with that friend, I think um, a lot of times what can happen is your child will come to you afterwards and be like, and maybe kind of fess up and say, you know what, that person really isn't good for me to be around. Um, and sometimes it just takes a little bit of time of them you know, getting away from that person for a little while. Um, and you can always be the bad guy. They can always say, hey, my mom said I can't hang out with you or my dad or whatever. Um, and absolutely put it on your shoulders. Um, I was always more than welcome to, to be the bad guy there. Um, the next one is tighten your rules. So if they start violating rules um, that you have in place, then maybe they're not, okay, maybe they're not um, able to handle the different amount of freedom that you're giving them. And every child's different and that's a uh, definitely something to manage and it's difficult when you have more than one child in the house because all rules are not always set the same and I think that's something that I did wrong when my kids were growing up um, because I they are so different and they handle different responsibilities in different ways um, so you know individualize your child and do what you know when it comes to handling freedom what kind of freedoms hours curfews, all of those kinds of things. Um, so tighten those rules up if they're, if they're getting in trouble. So that would be a way to discipline. Um, also have your child um, face logical consequences, like we always talk about, natural consequences, natural and logical. So natural, like whatever the natural consequences for something that they did, let them feel it. Um, like I always say, it's better to have them deal with consequences while they're under your roof and while they let them make mistakes while they're under your roof versus waiting till they go off to college and yet you've made all their decisions for them and they don't have a clue what's going on and then they are going to make a lot of mistakes and it's a lot easier to bring them down from those if they're still under your roof. So that's definitely something you wanna keep in mind. 
Um, and then the logical consequences, obviously, if they break something, they fix it. Um, one of my girls broke a door in our house and um, she had to pay for it. So uh, not only, uh, you know, so that came out of her allowance, right? So she, she broke the door, she had to pay for it. Um, so those, that's a logical consequence because that's what happens in real life. Um, another thing you could do to discipline is to assign extra responsibilities. You know how much they love chores. So that's something you could consider as well. So I hope that helped. I know a lot of you had asked about that. Um, a lot of you are running into um, the teenagers that are not quite, not quite 18 yet, but they're still living under your roof and, you know, everything's hitting the fan and everybody's, you know, there's a lot of stress going on in your home. Um, so I hope that helps and um, we're going to touch more on this a little bit more in the coming days. Um, but for now, I hope that helps someone and I'll see you next time. Thanks.